Some wonders I've tasted of your power. Media, can you help us find the lyrics? Eh, you have shown me so much mercy, much more than I deserve. Ah, let's try to sing it. You're the God of awesome wonders. I've tasted of your power. You have shown me so much mercy, so much, much more than I deserve. Than I deserve. Yeah. My eyes have seen, my ears have heard the wonders of your grace. Creation bow in honor of you and rejoice to give you praise. Awesome wonders, God of awesome wonders. That's the God that does great things. Amen. Yeah, I know you're not Nigerian, but yeah, it's just that line that is um, it's it's not even my tribe, but yeah, we're singing because it's a God of awesome wonders. How many believe that God is a God of awesome wonders? Iyanu, Iyanu, Onisha, Onisha, Iyanu, 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 Iyanu. Iyana, Iyana, Onisha, Onisha, Iyana, 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 Onisha, Iyana. You're the God. You're the God of us, someone. I've tasted of your power. Onisha, Onisha, Iyana. You have shown me so much mercy. Much more. Onisha, Iyanu. Onisha, Iyanu. You're the God. You're the God of us. Someone. I've tasted of your power. Tasted of your power. Onisha, Onisha, Iyanu. You have shown me so much more. Much more than I deserve. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Give him praise. 
Give him praise. Oh, oh, you're the God of awesome wonders. You're the God of awesome wonders. We tasted and seen that you are good. We tasted and seen that you are worthy of a praise. Because there is nobody like you anyway. Oh, come on, somebody bless the name of the Lord. Bless his name. Don't keep quiet on God. Tell him, Lord, I love you. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I give you praise. Because you deserve a worship. Because you deserve a praise. Because there is none that can be compared to you. You do great wonders, mighty miracles, signs and wonders. You are awesome in all of your ways. You are awesome in all of your ways. Hey, hey, hey. You are God of awesome wonders. God of awesome wonders. God of awesome wonders. We bow, we bow and give you praise. Cause you deserve all the worship. Cause there is no besides you anywhere. Oh, 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 oh. Worship him. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you all. Oh, make it louder. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour, so we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. In our lungs. So we pour out. Now praise to you. Can we make it louder? It's your bread. In our lungs. In our lungs. So we pour out. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your bread. In our lungs. So we pour praise to you. Great are you, Lord. Oh, make it louder. Make it louder. Say, great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Oh, great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Oh, great are you, Lord. Oh, great are you, Lord. Oh, great are you, Lord. Turning with you, that alone are worthy. That 
our Lord not holy. Bless the name of the Lord. You don't need a worship leader to worship the Lord. Just worship Him in your own way. Worship Him. Worship Him. Worship Him. Worship Him. Tell Him, Lord, I love you. The Lord, whom there's no variableness, no shadow of turning. You remain the same from ages to ages. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. You're so holy, you're so mighty. There is none that can be compared unto you. I shut There is none that can be compared unto you. You are holy, you are mighty. Lift 
said, tell, in sign of surrender, I'll forever. I want to, I want to forever, 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 Lord. I want to forever, 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 forever. No going back, no turning back, Lord. One more time, I love you forever, forever. Forever, forever, yeah, I love you forever. Oh, shot, I love a Just make a commitment to God that Lord, I will serve you forever, not going back. I love you forever. I'm not going back. No turning back. Just tell him, Lord, I'll serve you forever. I'll give you my all forever. I'll love you forever. From where you picked me from, brought me to, oh God, I will love you forever. For what you are to me, God, I'll love you forever. I'm not turning back. I'm not going back. I'm going to serve you forever. With all of my heart, with all of my soul, with everything that is within me. I'm gonna bless your name. I'm gonna give you thanks. I'm gonna lift your name high every day of my life, with every minute I've got, with every second of my life, with every breath that is within me. I'm gonna give give you all the praise, give you all the worship. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, we give you all the thanks, so oh God, this morning. Thank you, Father. We worship and we adore you. We ask the Lord you take our worship this morning. Accept our worship. Let them be a sweet smelling symbol. The Lord, you take the worship and bring down the blessing. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Can somebody shout aloud? Amen. Somebody who is excited about what God has said to do, give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Talk to your neighbor by the side and say it's good to be in the house of the Lord. I didn't add the effigy I put. Say it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. This week we were, we were printing t-shirts and I was trying to figure out a way to put good like on, <laughs> on the t-shirt to make it, you know. So that is evidence. Not that it's good. No, no. To add a word to it. But yeah, just, just uh, let, let it be for now. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. There's no better place to be than in the presence of the Lord. That's why I never say I'd rather be here than 10,000 in the world. Amen. All right. This is our month of the latter rain. And we've been looking at the series, The Latter Rain. Last week, we started a topic titled, Kill Okay, amen. For once, people can remember. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I should give testimony on the first Sunday of the month. So, the title was Kill That Fox. And we define, you know, we talked about the harvest. The book of Joel, chapter 2, 23 to 32. I think we'll just read it again um, today. Oh, Joel, chapter 2. Joel chapter 2 from verse 23. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he had given you the former rain moderately, and it will cause to come upon you, or come down for you, the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil, and I will restore to you the years that the locust had eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which are sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God and had dwelt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. Can somebody say amen? 
And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. I, I believe you should say amen there. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit, and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire, and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. 32. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord hath said. And, the, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Somebody say amen. amen. Okay. So we talked about the harvest and we talked about the latter rain from that scripture we saw in verse 24. So, and God, God told the children of Israel that I will pour the latter rain, the former rain, the rain and the latter rain. Last week we talked about what the, the, the types of rains could do. The former rain is like when you to plant a seed, is to prepare the ground. And the latter rain is the rain for the harvest. So the rain that helps make the harvest to be abundant. So, and then we talked about different types of rains, and we said that rain, different kind of um, droughts, because when the land is dried or when it, it, there's the harvest, it doesn't come forth, it could mean that the place, there's drought. And drought could be in your finances, drought could be in your academics, drought could be in your work, drought could mean that when you put in so much effort but little result, that's drought. But I say above all of this, all of these different kind of droughts, there's something that we consider most important and that should not happen to any believer and it's the spiritual droughts where you put in so much effort, where you read the Bible for two hours and you can't even remember what you read like the last minute. You spend so much time. Oh, you take your Bible to say, today I'm going to study. But you open your Bible and catch yourself 30 minutes later, you are asleep. Or you try to pray and then you kneel down there. And then the next thing you wake up, it was morning because you have been kneeling and sleeping since night. You know, that's drought. When you are so dried or where everyone else, like the worship we had now, everyone else was in the spirit. You want to be in the spirit, but you, you just can't. It's not that you don't want to. Paul said, the thing I want to do, I cannot do. You know, so you don't, it's not like you don't want to do those things. It's just that you are spiritually experiencing spiritual drought. And the word of God for us in this month is that wherever we've experienced drought, that the, the latter rain will cause a revival revival on your life in the name of Jesus so drought and then we talked about the, the harvest that the Lord is talking about could be different things could be harvest for finance could be harvest of babies those who are who are believing God for the fruit of the womb could be harvest of you know career could be, it could be harvest in different ways. Whatever you term harvest to be. Harvest is, is, is when you have labored. You put in so much effort. It's, what, it's the result of your labor. Your result of your searching as a young man. You have been searching and searching. And all of a sudden you found a fine girl. That is harvest. Somebody say amen. amen. That's harvest. So you could have harvest in different ways. You have been job hunting for many years, many months, and then all of a sudden, you get a job. That's a harvest. You, you are self-employed, and you have been believing, you have been doing petty, petty things, but you have been believing God for a break, and then one day, you just land a big contract that just turns things around. That is harvest. Somebody say amen. amen. So harvest could be in different forms. But the scripture was also talking about that this is the last days and this harvest could be harvest of souls. Last, last week I explained to you how there was revival so much in the UK. Re so much revival. Churches everywhere. Yesterday we were on Kensington Road again. And we found, we were counting churches that are just within 100 yards. That many churches. Not churches that were, you know, that garage turned church. No, churches that were originally church building. So we said... We are the ones concerned, like when we want to get to church, we are like concerned, let's not be close to that church. Let's not be close to that church. But actually in those days, there was so much need for church that if you count a hundred yards radius, you will find about five at least churches within where we went to yesterday. That's so much revival that we had. And God is saying that in these last days, I will so pour out this rain that there will be harvest of souls. But I said that what can kill the harvest? If the Lord should send 
that many souls like we pray and pray. The prayer team are always praying. There's hardly a time they are praying about themselves. They don't pray for their needs. They are praying, Lord, revive Liverpool. On Thursdays, we are praying, Lord, revive Liverpool. Pray for the people. But if God should really send that harvest to the body of Christ at the moment, are we really ready to receive them? That's the question we should ask ourselves. If, the, if we, we have prayed now that all the people on, on the L3 give their lives to Christ and they come to the church, is the church really ready to receive them? Are we not going to pollute the souls that the Lord has already sent? Because even we that are in the church, our life is not right. So we talked about the fox. To kill the fox at one thing. Because a fox is a very fast animal. A fox, a fox is very sleek. I talked about it last week. I, I don't know why I'm repeating myself, but it just helps to, to clue into the, the one for this week. A fox is very cute. A fox is adorable. So because of its cuteness, you don't know how terrible it can really be. A fox is something that when you allow it into your vineyard, it eats up all the fruit, the harvest. Solomon chapter 2 verse 15. It says, catch all the foxes. Those little foxes that can spoil the vine. So in, in 21st century Christians, we are concerned about, we, if somebody commits uh, fornication, we'll be like, ah, brother, you have sinned. The Lord is angry with you. But somebody told a lie. And we say it's a white lie. We are the ones who define what a big sin is and what a small sin is. We are the ones defining it. But, you know, it's not those big things. Everybody here, we are all concerned about not committing the sin of adultery. Not committing murder. Not committing... But there are so many other things that we've done today that are not that are against the will of God. That's why the Bible says, catch all the foxes. Then it now specifies those little foxes that can spoil the vine. It's not the big ones. It's not the big... The devil is not, you know, the devil is not concerned about those things. It just... He wants to... The small things. Those are the things that pull one out. That takes away the harvest. It's not a lion that comes to eat up the, the, the harvest. It's small animals. Like the locusts. Like the canker worms. The insect. They're the ones that spoil the, the harvest. The little things. Somebody say amen. amen. So we looked at all of that last week. We're going to look at what exactly are some of the little foxes. You can make your list longer, but I'm going to bring a couple of, to, of, of them today in the time that we have. Number one is busyness. Busyness. Somebody say what? Huh? Busyness. When you are too busy for the things of God. You don't know it, but there are little foxes. You can even be busy for God. Doing the things of God and yet be too busy in the eye of God. Busyness. When you are busy doing choir rehearsal, doing all the church things, take, you know, taking time, you are, you are doing the work of God. But when you are so busy doing the work of the master that the master has got no time with you, then you are too busy. For everything in the church, you are doing it. You are in prayer meeting, prayer um, warriors. You are in cleaning. <laughs> Excuse me. You are in the choir. You are, you are busy. You are sweeping. You do everything in the church. But yet God is saying, I don't have time for you. Then, then you are too busy. Those are little foxes. Because in the eye of men, and even in your own eyes, you are doing things for God. So that's good. But God is saying, I don't have time with you. Talk to your neighbor and say, don't be too busy. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 6, verse 10 and 11. It says, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of hands. That is even the things of God. Sometimes we can be so busy with other things that we don't have time for even the fellowship with brethren. That is the, it has become the norm in Europe. Now let's do this mathematics together. You, we come to church. Let's assume 
let's say those who come to church on Thursday, you come to church on Saturday. Let's say you are a leader. That means you come to church maybe at least once extra in the week. If you're in choir, you come to church for choir rehearsal. That's plus the time. If you're in prayer, you come to church another day extra. Now look at your own life. Can you really say that your life is 100% with God? Let's be sincere. Can you really say that you have nailed it like, ah oh, man, my life is on point. You know, it's, it's signed, sealed, and done. You know, can you really say that? But you are in church like how many times? Three times or more a week. Now there are some who don't go at all. They say we are studying the word of God at home. I'm praying at home. How can you really guarantee? Not like you're under any pressure. Not like they are killing people outside. So you are worshiping God at home. You have the liberty. Next door is a church. You, you have a complaint. Ah, the pastor took offering that day. The way the offering was, ah, this pastor has backslidden. Or oh, you, you, you went to another church. You'd be like, hey, what they are doing there? Even I heard the pastor slept with a choir member. I'm not going to church anymore. And then you went to the other one. You said, oh, since all the churches are the same, I'm not going anymore. And the book of Hebrews says, do not forsake the gathering together of saints. If you find it difficult to mingle with people here on earth, I don't know whether you will go to heaven because we will be all there. Different, different, there will be, there will be Pentecostal. There will be Anglican. There will be Baptist there. There will be different denom denominations. Just those who live their life according to that. They are mixed there. There will be black. There will be white. Whether you like to see it or not, you will be mixed. So if you cannot bear each other's differences because there's no perfect church. How many of us are hearing what I'm saying? I know they don't usually like this type of sermon, but it's, it's all right. <laughs> well, I will give it to them today. <laughs> there is no perfect church. Anybody that is looking for the perfect church, you will better go and start your own and see how hard it is. There's no perfect church because we're dealing with human beings. There's no perfect pastor. Oh, we get praises. Hey, Pastor Peter. Oh my God, Pastor Peter is such a lot. But Pastor Peter is not, is not, is not perfect. He's a human being. Somebody says he's a man of God. So even if there's God, but there's first man. And sometimes the human elements come out. They, they are not perfect. But the problem is that people have a reason. They, they will forget all the nice things and concentrate on the one. They have a reason not to... They, they must find a reason not to go to fellowship in the house of the Lord. That's the generation we live in now. Go and ask the average person who has stopped attending church. That's the reason. I'm not saying that church is a criteria for you to be born again. But I'm trying to compare. You who say you don't want to go. Can you see the life of those who are going? And how they are still believing and trusting God. What of you who has decided not to go at all? The Bible says do not despise the gathering together of saints. Hallelujah. We can be so busy. Busy, busy, busy. We say, oh, I'm working. I, uh, uh, I work seven days of seven days. So, Pastor, I can't be coming to church. But you know what? I will be watching online. Online is not for members of this church. Oh. Online is for unbelievers. It's to be able to reach the unreached. Because even if they, they will never turn to watch a ch Christian channel. And every so often, when you are not available, feel free to watch our Thursday Bible studies because some people work. And some, they are working hours, we don't allow them. Mm, that's all right. But not, not your cutting away deliberately to say, oh, I'm, no, I'm too busy. I can't. Don't despise the gathering together. You know, there's a, in America, there's a food food chain called Chick-fil-A. If you want to Google it, you'll find it's, um, it's a ch like KFC. But Chick-fil-A um, started his chicken outlet in America. And he chose on that his, his um, chicken outlet will only be open during the week. On, Sat on Sunday, he was not going to open. Ah! People questioned him that why would you do such thing? Because if all of, the, all of us who do who, are, who go to eat out in the restaurant. What day is this restaurant always full? It's in the weekends. Saturday and Sunday especially. It's always full. If you go to Nando's, you'll be waiting there 45 minutes. By the time they give you the food, your hunger has disappeared. If you say, okay, I'm going to do a uh, drive-through drive in KFC or McDonald's, you're going to be there, oh, 
and before they give you the food, you've forgotten what you wanted to order. It's, it's a very busy day. But this man, because he was a Christian, he chose not to open his restaurant on a, on a Sunday. People said he was stupid. An average um, yearly turnout of, of restaurants in America is $1 million a year. Do you know how much this man turns, turns, you know, his returns every year? is $5 million. Five times what those who open on Sunday get. I'm not saying this to condemn those who are working on Sunday. There are some jobs that you cannot, like if you are, if you are a medical practitioner, medical personnel, your work, but you can't be working every Sunday now. Even if you work on Sundays, you have one day of the week, a Thursday. At least that might be free. I know somebody in this church who was not really attending on the Sundays, but she was our faithful member on a Thursday. She attending Sundays now. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so we mustn't, at least, you, there's no how. You must give one day to God. I'm, I, I don't know why I'm even going this direction because I didn't plan it. I don't know why I'm saying it. I'm not trying to say it say, because there are people, there's somebody who is, attends our Thursday Bible study and this guy said um, they, they, they don't, that the country is from, they're not allowed. I think those who come for Thursday Bible study, we have met the guy. They're not allowed to worship. So he, they have been worshiping for, he has been born again, but for years, they have, it's a Muslim country. So they're not allowed to, 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 to worship. You'll be dead or arrested. So their, their church is inside their, their living room. They don't go to church. But they, they deliberately gather together. They set a time. They gather together inside, or even if it's family. So we are to this worship time. This now even makes me to, to, to wonder. I don't know. I don't even think I want to go in this direction. In, in, oh, no, let's leave it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. The second thing. What, what was the first thing? Busyness. When you are too busy for the things of God. When you are too busy. When your activities. You can be busy working for God and be too busy for God. The one who even sent you. So that's one. Number two is association. The Bible says that we should be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Our association, many of us are saved, but it, nothing has changed. The old things, old people we used to associate with, we are still as close to them. Nobody says you should break the relationship, say, I'm born again now, I'm not talking to you. Then you delete their number. No, but they are set, certain, the things you, you used to involve yourself with, with them, you cut it off. They have to see that there's a difference. Let's assume you were a prostitute before you became born again. There's no difference between a prostitute and somebody who was not born again. They are, they are all old man, old man. There's no big deal. But people in the eye of people, that's a big sin. Ah, you were a prostitute. You know. So let's assume that a prostitute now became born again. But she had other friends who were there, co-workers. And she became born again. And you, every now and then, you people used to meet, let's say on Friday in so place. You are not going to prostitute now, you are born again. But you are still going to meet with them in the squat where they hang around before they get picked up. <laughs> you want to be picked up, exactly. Many of us have friends who we used to go and, you know, have good time with and drink with and get drunk and smoke and talk about how nasty our wives are. And, you know, <laughs> you know yes, many of us have those things. And then you are now born again. And then the following week, you are going there. Women, we have people we used to gossip to. And, you know, gossip squad. We go out and we... <laughs> now that we are born again, we are still going to that, that convention. Every time. You know, just talking about, you know, the things of that woman, that, you know, and talk about our husbands. You know, we just, we just talk and talk and talk. But you are now born again. The Bible says we should be not 
unequally yoked together with unbelievers. You used to deal with drugs before you became born again. You became born again now. You are not dealing with drugs anymore, but you are helping them to hold it because you used to be the one holding it. You are yoked together with unbelievers. You should get rid, cut every chain. When a child is born, mothers who have had children, you know, or fathers who have been there if you were brave enough, you know, when your wife is giving birth, there is a cord that is attached to the child. That the child is coming out from their old place, the old regime, when you were not born again. Now that you are born, you don't leave the cord there. Many Christians are born again, but they left the cord. Ah, I want to convert him. Have you heard that it's easier to pull someone down than to lift someone up? You are trying to get married. And you are dating, a, you were date, before you got born again, you were dating a girl who is not born again. Now you are born again. Ah, you say, ah, because I promised her. And she's not born again. You want to, you, you have the chance to change now. You say, no, when I get married, I will convert him. Be not unequally yoked together with an unbeliever. Separate yourselves. Bible says we should come out from among them and be ye separate. Come out from among them, you know, Leave that zone. Let our light shine forth from a distance. Hallelujah. Amen. Association. Our association can prevent us from getting the harvest. If we are doing the things that unbelievers do, how do we get the harvest of souls that God has promised us? The third thing that could be a little fox you see the things I'm calling, they're not big things. Though. They're not fornication, adultery, murder, and those things. They're, not, they're just little. Things that we don't consider as a fox. The third thing is compromise. Compromise is when we say it doesn't matter. Oh no, this thing is very... I always give this example. It's like you are... Okay, this is old school because I don't think it happens anymore. Like you, you are going to work and you sign in the time you come in and sign out. This is old, like in those days. Those days when they used to sign, you write on a sheet of paper. You, you will look at the list, a full page. Everybody came at 8 o'clock. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that? You, you got to work. Then you turn and you just look at the full sheet of paper. Everybody was at 8 o'clock. So, okay, now, now imagine if I sign 8 o'clock and the next person signed 8 o'clock. That's understandable. Then 10 names later, you see at 8 o'clock. Okay, that's old school. In these days where we have, okay, for example, in my place now, nobody knows whether you go to work or not. You've hardly, in academics, nobody, if your boss is not even around, you know. You don't. You can you can come in strolling at ten o'clock, and leave at four or three thirty. Like nobody comes to check on you on your office. Are you there or you're not there? Like pff, people don't care. But you are paid for so number of hours, and then you come in at say you were supposed to start at eight o'clock and leave at four. You came in at ten. At four o'clock, quarter to four, you are already out. But that day you still get paid. As a child of God, that's compromise. We don't have to do things the way the world does it. Because we are not accounting. The, your boss is just, a, it's, not, it's not even this. It's a secondary person. You account to God. You have to be, you have to live your life, an exemplary life that others will see and be like, wow, this girl is different. That's how we are vest souls. Not with the massive, massive things. These little things, whether you like it or not, unbelievers are watching you. Hallelujah. I know I will not get plenty of excitement this morning because everyone is guilty. Compromise. Compromise are started since the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve, Genesis chapter 3. Where the devil said, Ah, oh, did you really say that? Did you say that God, God said you should not eat this thing? Oh no, you will not surely die. Just eat it. Eat this fruit. Compromise. Amen. The fourth thing is materialism. Materialism. I'm not. Materialism is 
It's not when you have things. It's when the things have you. It's not when, oh, you crave so much for, or you have three iPhones. One for the number used in calling Africa. Another one for the number used in Europe. Another one for the one, you know, it's not, it's not about those things. It's when the things actually have you. Say, for example, your phone. I, I don't know why I use phone very often as example, because it's, it's what is in vogue now. When it changes, I will change my illustration. You know, many of us cannot go through the service without going back to our Snapchat and Instagram. Like, the service is like one hour, 30 minutes, excluding the Bible study. It's like one hour, 30 minutes. Many of us cannot sit. This is, this is presence of God. God is just sitting there now watching us. At least if, in the mentality of people, like, this is supposed to be presence of God, isn't it? Let's assume if God is not present anywhere else, God is present here, isn't it? If, you, if God is not present in your house, he's, at least he's here. But many of us cannot scale through one hour service without going to our Snapchat and typing the word that just hits you now in church on Snapchat. <laughs> Let's assume that that's what we are doing. Many of, us cannot, many of us cannot scale through our prayer time or study of the word of God without just going quickly to Facebook. Like we just, we lead our, our it's like, we, it's not that we, we deliberately do it. So our fingers just find itself there. There are many of us who cannot take our eyes off things. Some people can decide not to come to church. Because they are going to the, um, what is that market that they do on Sundays? So, whatever. Sunday market, yeah? Okay. Car booth sale. Yes. I have heard that excuse, whether I like it or not, many times. Those days, thank God the Lord has delivered me from those excuses, Lord. The excuse of, Pastor, I played game so late, I could not wake up early. I've heard that excuse like tons of times. So, now that I'm not hearing it, we have to thank God for this one. This is a testimony. A person will comfortably ring pastor on a Sunday morning. Pastor, I'm sorry I could not make it today. I played games so late yesterday. Materialism is not when you just own something. It's when the thing now has you. You played game and played game. The question I would like to ask believers is, can you give that excuse to your boss at work for seven pound an hour job? No. Let's answer the question. For seven pound an hour job, you cannot even dare to give that excuse. Maybe you can say I was not feeling well. I want us to go back and reflect. We are looking for revival, revival. But some of the excuses that we bring to God, the reason why we cannot do this, the reason why we cannot do that, can we really give those excuses to our boss, our human boss? That's what the scripture says. If I be a father, where is my honor? That's the question that God asks. If I be a father, where's my honor? If I be a master, where's my honor? materialism. These are the little foxes that spoil the vine. I don't know what little fox, maybe your own is not in this category, but I believe that the Holy Spirit is already convicting different people in this room and telling them about their own little foxes. Which one is your own? Bow down your heads this morning and ask the Lord to help you to get rid of those little foxes. Tell the Lord, help me to get rid of those little foxes that spoil the vine. I might not have mentioned your own. Ask the Lord. I may not even know it, Lord. Open my eyes to see it. They are so little that they could be missed. I may not, you know, be aware of them, Lord. Holy Spirit, open my eyes to see those little foxes that could ruin the harvest. Little foxes that could take away the, the harvest of these last days. Help me, Lord. Open my eyes to see. For those of you who already know, maybe this 
sermon has pointed to some, some areas of your life and you want to say, Lord, help me to get rid of them. Those little foxes that spoil the vine. Help me, Father. Help me, Father. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Keep praying. Keep praying. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Help you. It's not an easy job. Holy Spirit, help me, Lord. Help me to get rid of all of these foxes. Ah, I cannot do it on my own. Give me strength. Give me strength. Give me strength. Help me, Lord, not to, you know, get myself involved in these things anymore. Help me to secure the gates and prevent the little foxes from coming into the vineyard. Anything, those little foxes, I want to destroy my relationship with you. Give me the grace, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. This morning, those watching online and those in this room, somebody needs to give their life to Jesus. Somebody needs to be born again. There's no gimmicks. If you are the one, lift up your hands. If you need to give your life to Jesus. If you are watching online, you want to receive Jesus into your life as your Lord and your Savior. Quickly, just place your hand on your chest and say, Lord, that's me. I need to be born again. I need to surrender my life to you. I need you to be my Lord and my Savior. If that's you, lift up your hand boldly and unashamed. Tell the Lord that that's me. I need to give my life to you. I don't care what you have been doing. You might even be a leader, whatever. But you want to give your life to Christ. You know, <laughs> death is not an issue of age. Anyone can die at any time. So I'm waiting. I've not enjoyed life enough. But God is calling you and saying you want to give your life to Jesus. That's me. Lift up your hands right now wherever you are. You're watching online. Stretch your hand to the screen. Place your hand on your chest. And I'm going to pray for you. In your own words, I just want you to say, Father, I surrender to you. I give you my heart. Come into my life. Begin to tell the Lord. Tell him however you feel. Say, Lord, I'm, I'm surrendered to you. I've lived a worldly life. I've not acknowledged you as Lord and Savior. I've been religious, but I've not really known you. I ask you that you come into my life and be my Savior and be my Lord. Tell him in your own words. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And so, Father, we thank you for this word that you have allowed us to hear. Thank you, I ask, O oh Lord, that this word will not be used against us. The Lord will not just be hearers of this word only, but be the doers of this word. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. All right, just to remind us again, I know we don't have flyers out yet, but our convention is coming up November 23rd, 24th, and 25th. I saw someone who will be very excited. Get all your friends. Prepare them for this event. Let them know that it's ha happening um, live and at Gloryland. Gloryland is not about 88 Hague Street. Gloryland could be where we enter. Anywhere we go becomes Gloryland. Amen. <laughs> so uh, we don't yet know the venue, uh, but keep letting people know about the event. Amen. Um, we've got a first timer, I suppose, in our midst. Worship with us for the first time. If you notice anybody you have not seen before, give them a handshake. Uh, someone is watching with us for the first time right over this corner. Let's show her some love. Let's welcome her. You are welcome. You are welcome. Hey, all the huggers are on holiday. My sister, forgive us. Our huggers are not here today. Amen. God bless you and thanks for... Oh, yes, another first timer. We, we didn't take note. Welcome, my love. You are welcome. Yes, yes. <laughs> Amen. Uh, it's good to have you fellowship with us. If you don't mind, after the service, just five minutes, we'd like to speak with you and get to know you. And um, so this is Glory Worship Church. Um, it's a place where we go from glory to greater glory. Amen, amen, amen. And um, we, we would like to get in your personal space and get to know you more. So oh, please wait behind. I know you've been here already a couple of hours. Amen. We are ready to go home. I hope I've not missed any announcement. We are, we are customizing some t-shirts at the moment. 
Oh, somebody be excited. Uh, so, it's, uh, it's <laughs> those who need your sizes, uh, please wait behind after the service and see if you want to see Pastor Peter so that we can have your sizes um, done. But they'll be ready. In fact, they'll be ready tomorrow, some of the t-shirts. Um, we have some of them. Um, oh, I can't even remember all of the things. Oh, oh gosh. Okay. <laughs> I can't remember, but nice, nice words. It's another way to get the gospel of Jesus out on the street. And again, it's another way. It doesn't say glory worship church somewhere, but it's, we just, it's just a way of, and um, it will help us uh, as a way of doing something down to get a, 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 some income for the churches for, for, for purchase a building or repair a building. You know, something like that. So we're going to put that money aside. So if, you, if you're interested, buy more than one. Because it's from next week. No heels, no fine clothes, jeans, and t-shirts. Somebody say amen. <laughs> All right, we're going to be having a dress down Sunday very soon. When the students are back. <laughs> so somebody's just looking at himself like, this is already dressed down. But <laughs> I know we do dress down in this church, but dress down Sunday, that means... Just come as you are. <laughs> Amen. When I can figure out what come as you are means, I will let you know what Sunday will be having. Let's rise on our feet. It's time to go home. Grab the hand of a neighbor. I want us to pray. You don't always know what is happening to the person beside you. You don't always know the trials and the tribulation that the person beside you is going through. Some people are sick in their bodies. Some people are going through one challenge or the other. Some are disappointed at God. Some are angry at God. But they come to church, they are saying hallelujah, shouting amen, and you think all is well. The clothes are covering so many things. You don't know what's going on in the life of your neighbor. So in this next one minute, I just want you to pray over that person. And begin to speak the peace of God over every circumstance, every situation that has weighed them down. Let's begin to pray and say, Lord, I speak the peace of God. I speak joy over every area of their sadness. Begin to declare that the only the will of God will be done. People are crying and wetting pillows every day. When they come to church, they look all happy. Speak over that life and say, it shall be well with you. No evil will, be, will, will happen to you after today. I declare the peace of God. Oh, only good news, peace, blessings shall be your portion. Yo, you shall not experience any evil. This week shall be blessed. Oh, everywhere you cried before, this week you're experiencing joy, rejoicing and gladness shall not depart from your home. In the name of Jesus, pray over everything that has weighed them down and declare that the Lord is stepping into those areas and making crooked paths straight. Pray for that person. Pray with all your heart. Pray, 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 pray. Pray like the life of that person is in your hands. Pray for that person and say nothing evil will happen to you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I want you to hold that hand again. There are a couple of members in this church that are going through a tough time or the other. This week we've been to see one person in the hospital and some others are not, you know, feeling well. I want you to just join your hands with that person. And I don't, I know I'm not saying you should pray for yourself, but the Bible says that Job got his healing when he prayed for his friends. Job got his freedom when he prayed for his friends. So as you're praying for that person, God is working on the prayers and giving you double you know, in that area, wherever you need it, God is just working it out. So don't, don't say, oh, pastor is praying for other people. You know, pray for, pray for those people like, you know, their life is hanging on your hands, on, on your prayers in the name of Jesus. So I want us to pray for those families, one or the other. These are the ones we know. Some of them we don't even know. We're going to pray that, Lord, that you will touch them in the hospital bed. That you will touch them in their homes. That you touch everyone who is going through one challenge or the other. That the hand of the Lord will be upon them. In the name of Jesus, let's begin to pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Pray for that person. Pray, Lord. Father, we thank you for all our brothers and sisters of Glory Worship Church. We use them as a point of contact to reach every other child of God in Liverpool. And Lord, we declare for those who are in the hospital bed, we release the angel of God 
the angel of healing to go and touch them in their in the beds and declare that their healing is now in the name of Jesus. We declare healing for those who are discouraged. Some of them are at home. Those who are going to one challenge or the other. The Lord, you touch them, touch them, touch them. No plan of the enemy will work against them. We take we take authority against the spirit of death. Death will snatch you out from those people in the name of Jesus. We declare that your healing is happening right now. Touch them in the hospital beds, oh God. Oh yes, Lord. Turn every broken heart, bend every broken heart in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Say to your neighbor, say, surely, goodness, mercy, favor, promotion, grace, blessings on every side shall be multiplied in your life. Not just today. Not just this week, not just this month, not just this year. You shall go from glory to glory, to greater glory, to overflowing glory. Neighbor, I'm not waiting for you. Oh, say it again. Say, neighbor, I'm not waiting for you. Meet me at the top. Neighbor, I'm not waiting for you. I will see you at the top. Have a lovely week, everybody.